So today in this video, we're making a video for the ladies. Specifically, we're looking at the pros of dating a single dad just like me. My ex and I split up, I almost called her my wife, my ex and I split up about a year ago, the divorce is done, and I'm now finally at the stage where I'm starting to date again. I had my first date earlier this week and another one this afternoon. But what we're looking at is the pros and the cons of dating a guy in my situation. That way you ladies can evaluate whether or not it's going to be worth it for you. But don't worry guys, I've also got some tips in here for you and some things that can help you broaden your appeal to the women that you're trying to date. We'll get into that a little bit further down in the video though. So first let's look at the pros of dating a single dad for the ladies out there. So the First pro I want to talk about is the fact that if if he's a dad and if he's a good dad, he's going to be naturally more nurturing and more loving and more caring. And not just to the kids, but he'll be that way with you also. That's a huge plus. And I'm not knocking the people out there that don't have kids, but until you have raised a kid and been involved in their life, you just don't quite relate that same way to other people. Um, you just don't have that experience. If, you're, if you've never raised a child and nurtured them and loved them and cared for them and dealt with them when they were being difficult to you, you just don't know what that's like. And that experience is invaluable and that will trickle over into how he treats you. So that's a huge plus in my mind. The next thing, of course, is I would be wary of a single dad who introduces you to his kids immediately. A good parent of either gender is going to wait at least a, a month or two, if not longer, Longer before they introduce a respective uh, romantic partner to their children. In my divorce decree, we actually have it in there where we have to wait six months, although we have talked about maybe shortening that a little bit, um, coming to an agreement on our, on our own outside of that divorce decree. But it's a huge red flag if they introduce you right away. But once they introduce you, that's huge because that means you have his stamp of approval to introduce you to the people that are most important in his life. That's a huge validation for how he feels about you. He may be a typical guy and may not be super clear on expressing his emotions and telling you how he feels about you, but if he's introducing you to his kids, especially if it's been a few months of dating, that's a huge plus in your favor. The other thing that's good to know about a single dad who's dating is if he, again, if he's a good dad, he's going to be looking for a partner with character and integrity. And those things are going to matter more than pure sex appeal and whether or not he thinks you're good in the sack. I'm not saying those things aren't important to a guy. We're visual creatures. They're definitely going to be important. But we're balancing that out with making sure if we're going to be introducing this person to our kids, that they're a person of quality and integrity. And so if he's dating you, then that's a good sign that that's how he feels about you. And then the last thing I want to bring up is whether or not he has a daughter. I have three daughters and believe me, that impacts how my view of women in general, it impacts how I treat other women. It increases my ability to be sensitive to the women uh, needs of a woman and how a woman communicates, how she expresses herself and feels. I'm much more in tune with those things having had three daughters than I was before that. So if he has a daughter, that's a huge plus in your favor in terms of your ability to communicate with him and feel heard and understood. Now, of course, there are some cons to dating a single dad too. So we just talked about the pros. Let's get into those cons. The first one is maybe kind of obvious, but it's baby mama drama. He has an ex out there that he had these kids with. Maybe he's got more than one. Luckily, all three of my daughters are from the same woman, and we have a fairly amicable relationship now. But that's not always the case, let's be honest. And most of my friends that are divorced don't have particularly amicable relationships with their ex. And in fact, some of them have terribly toxic relationships with them. And so that's going to be important for you to find out what kind of relationship do they have? How do they communicate with each other? How often do they see each other? And how does the communication flow when they do see each other? Because guess what? If your dating turns into a serious relationship or maybe eventually marriage, 
you're going to be part of that relationship too. And if it's highly toxic, that's going to be your life. And you have to decide now whether or not you want to put up with that. The next con, of course, is the fact that if he's a good dad, they're always going to come first and you're going to be lower down on the priority list. And that's going to be true most of the time, at least until they're out of high school. And again, if he's a good dad, he's putting their needs first. He's prioritizing his time with their needs first and you're going to come second and you just have to develop some thick skin, understand that's the reality of the situation, understand that's part of what makes him a good dad and that should be an appealing quality, but it does mean he's not going to be able to spend as much time with you consistently without ever doing anything else and without making other things a higher priority. That's just the reality of the situation. In my case, I have my kids 50% of the time. This week I don't. This is the week I make videos typically, but next week I'm going to have them 100% of the time and my ex won't have them. And the reality of it is, is I, I typically, I'm planning right now only to date on the weeks that I don't have them. I could of course get a babysitter during some of those weeks or pay my oldest child to babysit the younger ones. I could do that and I may eventually do that, but it's a whole lot easier on my end to date on the weeks that I don't have them. But that would mean that I'm only dating somebody every other week. And if it starts to get serious, you know, that that's a potential issue, at least until we've gone enough time to where I can introduce them to the kids and hang out with them with the kids, which won't be immediately. The next con, of course, is that money's going to be a little bit tighter. You know, I make a good living as a blogger and a YouTuber, six, well into the six figures a year, but guess what? I'm giving a significant amount of money to my ex every month in terms of child support and also the, the financial agreement that we worked out. I've got I pay for all of the kids' medical expenses now, health insurance and doctor's visits and things like that. And, and you know, we're living in two different places now. And so my finances are, are tighter, much tighter than they were when my ex and I were still together. And that's just the reality of the situation and will be for a little bit of time. I'm figuring it out as I go and I'm, I'm making improvements and I'm figuring out where I need to cut back and things like that. But I won't have as much disposable income as I did before the divorce. And that's just the reality of the situation. And so you're going to find possibly that he doesn't have as much money to take you on lavish vacations and eat out every week and things of that nature. So you're going to have to get used to the idea that finances might be a little bit on the tighter side. And then the last con I want to bring up is the fact that when he does introduce you to the kids, depending upon how amicable the breakup was with the ex and how long ago it was, you may find that there is animosity directed towards you and you're going to have to learn to not take that personally. It isn't really about you. It's about the breakup and the ex and the drama and all of that and the instability that they feel. And again, the, depends on how old the kid is. Honestly, the younger kids are probably going to be a little bit easier to deal with than teenagers. I've got two teenagers and a a, grown, a growing toddler, let's say. She's almost five. But I've got a, a wide age range of kids to deal with. And right now, my ex is is wanting to introduce her boyfriend to them. And from my oldest, she's getting a lot of pushback. Um, and it's just the nature of the situation. And, and so there will be that rejection potentially, but it also depends on how you handle it and how you come into the situation. And we're going to talk about that next. But first, I want to encourage you to smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. That way you get notified of future videos that I put out just like this one. I'm hoping this video is helping you. But for now, let's keep going. So we just talked about his kids potentially rejecting you. So how do you win them over? Because if you don't win them over, there's a good chance you might lose him too. So how do you win over all of them? And you know, and then you're going to of course have to decide whether that's worth it or not. But how do you win them over? Well, first, don't try and replace their mom. That's the first thing. And of course, you know, this goes either way. If, if it's a single, if it's a dad trying to date a single mom, don't try and replace their dad. That's, that's just going to end in disaster. After all, if their mother was a good mother, then their mother's still involved in their lives and they're going to see you as an intruder, especially if the divorce 
and the separation wasn't that long ago. They may, they may blame you for it, even if that's totally unfair. So you've got to ease into the situation. You've got to take it slow. You've got to not try and replace them. Don't talk to them like a parent. Talk to them as a, a friend or like an aunt, maybe, a, family, a close family member, but don't try and be their mother. You can, of course, nurture them and love them and care for them if they fall down and get hurt and things like that. I'm not saying don't do those things, but avoid trying to parent them, at least initially. You gotta get some track, uh, a track record under your belt first before you go that route. The next thing, of course, is especially if they're empathetic, like my, because my ex initiated the divorce, my kids are naturally a little more sympathetic towards me. And so a woman that comes into my life that I introduce them to, which hasn't happened yet, but a woman who is really nurturing to me and taking care of me and my needs and really going the extra mile, they're going to see that and they're going to appreciate that. They're going to be, look, look, look how happy dad is. This woman is amazing. It's going to go a long way towards ingratiating you to them. And I talked about not trying to be their mom, not trying to be their parent, but I do want you to take an interest in their lives. After all, you're coming into this family. You're not just coming into his life. You're coming into their lives. So figure out what their interests are. What do they like to do? Do they play sports? Do they play music? What do they do? Do they have after school extracurricular activities that they go to? Go to some of those things and show your support for them. Uh, of course, take into account whether mom is going to be there and whether there's going to be like you know, baby mama drama, take that into account, but take an active interest in who they are as people. Get to know them, ask them questions. People love to talk about themselves. Ask them questions, get them talking about themselves. You're gonna learn what's important to them and in turn, it's gonna draw them closer to you. And I talked about moving slowly. What do exactly do I mean by that? Well, you just need to understand that initially there could be a lot of pushback from them. And if there's too much, the guy may reject you feeling like he needs to side with them. So you gotta take things really slowly. Just, you know, interact with them, ask them questions, get them talking about themselves, let them see you take care of him and his needs. And, and they'll, nat like I said, they'll naturally kind of feel warm and fuzzy about that, especially if they feel like he'd been, you know, mistreated or whatever by his ex. But take it slow. Don't try and move too quickly with him or with them. Let it develop naturally over time and they're going to naturally draw closer to you as that happens. If you try and rush it or force it, it's going to push them away and could just blow up in your face. And then lastly, I mentioned earlier, you have to develop thick skin. And what I really mean by that is you may get a lot of pushback and a lot of rejection from his kids and you need to not take that personally. I said that earlier. I really want to reiterate that. You can't take it personally because really it's not about you. It's about how they feel about the divorce and, and their dad and their mom and their relationship. And, and the more drama there was in the divorce, the more drama there is now, the harder it might be for you to get a foot in the door. And you can't take that personally. It's just not about you, even though it feels like it. And you've got to develop some thick skin, some patience, some real kindness and empathy, and just kind of try and put yourself in their shoes, feel what they're feeling. And again, don't try and rush things or force things. So that is the situation that it's like when you're dating a single dad. And like I said, I've had two dates this week, uh, had three total, um, since the divorce was finalized and I'm still getting my feet wet, still trying to decide what I want, uh, what my needs are. And, and, and luckily, uh, two of the three were also single parents, so they understand what I'm going through. But I hope this video helps you. Again, if it did, hit the bell notification and the subscribe button too. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.